My name is Stacy Pinnell. I'm 19 years old. And tonight I'm reading an excerpt from um, my article, which I like to call The Eye of the Dragon, which is published in this week's Tucson Weekly. So pick up a copy. I'd also like to give a special thank you to Katie, um, our writing director, Jimmy from the Tucson Weekly, and Miguel from the Pima County Health Department. I wouldn't have been able to finish this opportunity without all three of them, so thank you. As I waited in line at the Tucson Syringe Exchange Program, the older gentleman in front of me reminded me of myself many months ago, digging bundle after bundle of dull syringes out of my bag, t-shirt and shoes worn and torn, asking the nurse for extra supplies. Since getting clean and painfully detoxing from heroin, I have a new perspective on how helpful these syringe exchange programs are. LifePoint, Tucson's needle exchange program, works like this. Every Tucson Every Tuesday and Friday, the LifePoint van parks at an undisclosed location in central Tucson. Clients find the van via word of mouth. The mobile unit operates from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m., and patrons begin to show up shortly after the doors open. Clients walk up to the door to the van and deposit their used syringes into a burn container, which is later incinerated. They then wait at the door while a public health assistant bags up the same number of needles they just deposited. The whole exchange takes less than five minutes. Recently, I went back to LifePoint's mobile clinic to get a sober perspective on the program. It seemed like just yesterday that I was coming in for supplies myself. When I boarded the LifePoint vehicle, I noticed two 10-gallon buckets of new, never-used syringes and boxes of items needed for successful, safe injections. This included sterile aluminum cookers, cotton balls to drop into the cooker and absorb the chemicals, tiny individual containers of sterile water, rubber tourniquets, abscess infection kits, alcohol prep pads, and bleach. The selected, the selected items are packaged up in brown paper bags and ready for clients to pick up outside of the mobile unit. They are very smart, very resilient people, says Miguel Soto of the clients who show up for assistance. Miguel is the coordinator of the program. They care about their health and are taking an active interest in protecting themselves. From my perspective, there is no judgment, no discrimination from the staff. They are concerned and respectful, automatically accepting of anyone who shows up to their mobile unit with at least one new syringe and in need of support. Sitting on the bus talking with Miguel, my track marks healed to scars and memories. You could cut the gratitude in the air with a razor blade. I was overwhelmed by the thought that without life point, I could be dead or dying a slow death from sharing a dirty needle. This program touched my life, sincerely. There are no easy answers for why I got addicted to heroin in the first place. At least not an answer that could be understood by anyone who's not been through the nightmare of addiction, who's not had to cook up their breakfast in a spoon every morning. I only want a distraction, blissful oblivion. No one forced a needle into my arm. I got addicted through one bad decision and a lack of support or activities. When you're an addict, sober friends are hard to find. It seems like everyone around you is high and wrapped up in themselves. Back when I was using, it was so refreshing to have the LifePoint staff ask about my well-being. How has your week been? Can I help you with anything else? These questions brightened my whole day. They reminded me that outside of my slow suicide, people were still living their lives. The sun was still rising, and time was forever elapsing. Until they make the decision to get clean, addicts are still going to use. LifePoint makes it possible to protect their health and inject safely. Thank you.